Thank you very much, Basima Rabat Daudi. <clears throat> yeah, all my life, music was my language. Um, over the years, of course, words have to help sometimes. And I feel today is a day, which is such a day, where I would like to say a few words. Uh, Music usually I memorize, speeches I usually have to write down, so please excuse me for that. On this occasion of the 90th anniversary of the genocide against the Assyrian people, I would like first and foremost to commemorate all those who have lost their lives, their ancestors and their dignities in these brutal massacres. Uh, my grandparents, who still live in Syria, my grandfather just passed away two weeks ago. He was a shamasha of the Assyrian Church of the East in a small village on the Khabur River. Uh, they have always told me that they ended up in Syria because of these massacres in a refugee camp. And then they ended up settling in a small village where they had sheep and cattle and cotton, but it was a very poor life. And who knows how the Assyrian people would have prospered without these massacres. I believe that the future of the Assyrian people will depend heavily on unifying our various groups, on acknowledging our great heritage, and on working together with those countries which have proven to be kind to us. As a concert violinist and musician since my earliest childhood, I was fortunate to have met many elder statesmen. For instance, current Chancellor Gerhard Schröder, when I was still a, Karen, uh, a scholarship recipient in Germany, former Chancellor Helmut Kohl, um, many people of the German government, also elder statesmen in the United States, such as Donald Rumsfeld. And whenever the question comes up, what is your heritage, who are you? What is that name, Yonan? and say, well, my father is an Assyrian. And people are, oh, Assyrian, what is that? I've never heard of that. And so I was very fortunate to have um, had the opportunity as a musician to talk to those people and to at least let them know that we exist, since many people seem to have forgotten us. Um, many of you might know my mother, and I'm not here as the son of my mother, but really as of myself. But my mother has written many books on Assyrians. Her name is Gabrielle Yonan, and she still lives in Berlin. And my father, Schliemann Yonan, has been the uh, head of the German division of the Assyrians in Germany. And so I grew up with a very strong sense who I am and what I am, which has really helped me also in America. Um, I was also fortunate to have met in the United States, which is now my home, many of those who have survived these massacres, who were then in their early or late 90s. Regardless if I was in Chicago, Turlock, or San Jose, these stories were always equally tragic, full of despair and resignation. I've talked to old ladies who were 95 years old, 98 years old, 103 years old, and they would tell me with very clear memories what happened to them. America became the home of many of those who fled the terror. Having grown up in Berlin, I tried for many years to ignore my Assyrian heritage, partially because it was too difficult to explain to normal people, and also because it seemed more convenient to say that I was German. Having been, besides my father, only one of some Assyrians in Berlin did not help matters very much. However, after I came to Chicago at the age of 16, I realized that I was just one of 70,000 Assyrians, a very alive and successful community. And after I was invited to give concerts in California, I realized that Assyrians are an acknowledged ethnic group in the United States 
with all freedoms, rights, and understanding for their culture, nothing to be ashamed of. Presidents of major banks, world-class surgeons, CEOs and CFOs of major companies, a congresswoman, a world-renowned tennis player whom we all know, but also hard-working cab drivers, nurses and shift workers, many decent people, the list is long, have made their lives in America. After many discussions with my American and German friends, but also with people of other minority, have I realized that there can be no compromise, but only the continuous fight for the acknowledgement of our national movement and the protection of the rights of Assyrian people wherever they live. Until that day has arrived, all of us have the responsibility to educate our non-Assyrian friends about the existence of our great heritage and also about the high achievements of many contemporary Assyrians. There can be no compromises and concession to certain groups who claim that the term Assyrian is scientifically not correct because all what matters is that the majority of our people identifies with that term. We, the American Assyrians, have achieved prosperity, freedom, and happiness, all important gifts which many of us in Western democracy take for granted, but which have been declined to far too many of our fellow people in countries such as Iraq, Iran, and Turkey. After having spoken with many young American Assyrians at various conventions, I can only say that our communities in the States are alive and well. We receive our people with open arms to provide them with the opportunity to achieve all of these gifts for themselves. With the currently unstable situation in the Middle East, we have to realize that this could be also our chance to make people aware about who the real inhabitants of the land between the Euphrates and the Tigris River were. This could be our chance to involve world leaders in the discussion about the rights of minorities and particularly ours in the Middle East. This chance will not last forever. We will have to bring the Assyrian cause to world leaders before it is too late. We will have to work together patiently with governmental and non-governmental organizations for the full understandings who the Assyrian are and the full understanding of the Assyrian tragedy, but also for a future which will allow every person of Assyrian descent to be proud of their heritage. As the music director of the Assyrian Universal Alliance Foundation in Chicago, I have seen many bright young Assyrians at our scholarship dinners. We have an annual scholarship dinner every summer where young Assyrians who just enter college um, are given scholarships to enter such universities as Harvard, Yale, University of Chicago, Northwestern University, the Juilliard School, New York, where I went, and many others. And I believe that excellence is one of a million dollars a year which is given every year to those young people. And the people who give the money into the scholarship remind the young people about the importance to carry on. In this spirit, I would like to tell all of you, let us remember who we are and why we are gathering here in this hall today. And let us forgive but not forget the people who were responsible for the decline of our people so that we can build again for a better and prosperous future. Thank you very much. Nu blir det som avslutning lite musik från eh, David Jonan. Varsågod. Born 1685 in Germany and he died in 1750. He was uh, mostly a church musician who every composer and every musician has to study. And he composed six solo sonatas, and I always believe the Adagio is one of the most intimate and personal pieces you can find on the solo violin. That's why I chose that for the opening. The second piece I played was 
the Hebrew melody by Joseph Achron. Joseph Achron was a Russian Jew who had to emigrate the pogroms in Russia. And he composed this piece when in Palestine. He was one of the first immigrants to come to Palestine, which became later Israel. And uh, he composed this beautiful Hebrew melody, which uh, he later described, describing the horrors of the Jews fleeing these pogroms. So that's why I chose that. And of course now, towards the end, I need to choose something. Uh, unfortunately, we still don't have significant written music uh, as Assyrians, but uh, I, I wrote down some of the melodies I heard in the villages and I also collected some songbooks which I found in the States with some families. And I will play now two, well, one piece by, of course, the greatest Armenian composer, uh, arguably the most important Armenian composer, who was also one of the most important composers in Russia, Aram Khachaturian. He wrote a sharp poem, which is actually for violin and piano, but I will just play it without piano. And without, I will play two melodies. One is called Assyrian Melody from the Hills, or also known as Lily of the Valley. I don't know, some people might recognize it. And the second is a very familiar West uh, Assyrian melody, which I'm sure many people will recognize in the audience. And then I will finish the program with a short virtuoso piece called Ballade by the Belgian violin virtuoso Eugène Isai, which I chose because I think it's a good piece to close this. Thank you very much.
which I have performed many, many, many times over, all over the world. It's considered to be the flash piece in every international competition, and I also think that it reflects very much the personality of a traveling violinist. It was written by Eugene Isai, who was a Belgian violin virtuoso, who had uh, an amazing career as a conductor, violinist, and composer. And I personally look up to this person very much, and therefore I would like to close with this piece. It's called Ballade, and it's almost like a story told on the violin, which he wrote very close before his death, so it reflects a person's life, and I think many people can relate to this piece.